We sparking and rushing mad like inside the dark. Call me Bill Snatcher. Just the brother for the rapture. I hang lines, holding on strong, hard to capture. Extravagant, resurrect the track and it's militant. And I react like a convict and start killing. It's manifesting. The gods work like appliances, dealing in my sacred life. Before we go any further, just want to say today's video is going to be sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community that focuses on learning with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and you can get lost in your own creativity. Well, for me, the class I found to be the most interesting was Podcasting Secrets, How to Start Your Own Podcast, because that was something that allowed me to see a lot of the shortcomings that I had with the podcast I tried to start last year. The good thing about Skillshare is that it's specifically curated for learning, which means that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes and it allows you to take your own first steps along your own creative path, whatever that path might be, whether that be the photography classes or the animation classes or the drawing classes, there's something here for everybody. Now, Skillshare is very affordable. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. However, I'm going to help you guys out for a second. So the first 1,000 subscribers that click on my link in the description box will get a free trial of a premium Skillshare membership that allows you to explore your own creativity. So this is the beautiful thing though, right? Skillshare allows you to do something that you couldn't do yesterday and the classes are very short which are designed for real life. So if you're somebody like me who's always busy, these classes are just short enough to where you'll be able to learn everything and not actually get in the way of your everyday life. Skillshare believes in a strong community that is essential to personal growth. So it allows you to tap into the support of fellow creators who provide encouragement and communication and inspiration. When you join, you can try one of Skillshare's new live classes. You can experience real-time inspiration as you connect with popular teachers while watching and working alongside other members. Regardless of whatever your skill level is, whether it be beginner or pro or somebody that's a master at something, there's something here for everybody. And I would encourage you, once again, the first 1,000 people who go down to my link in the description box, you get access to a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. And I do think it's something that a lot of people will benefit from. But with that being said, let's get back into the video. Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys another discussion for Boruto Naruto to next generations the manga and for anime only fans this is the time of month where a lot of the content that you guys see on the channel is gonna be spoiler heavy so i thank you for your support However, if you're still here, I'm assuming that you guys are all caught up with the Boruto manga and you guys don't care about me talking about spoilers or theories or etc. So I think we need to have a conversation about Sasuke Uchiha actually upgrading in a certain extent of being able to actually use the flying Raijin. And I think that when you look at the way that Sasuke's actual fighting capabilities are, I think this is something that actually works very well for the actual character because you're looking at a situation where Sasuke was already using space-time ninjutsu. Sasuke already has a very sharp mind, arguably a sharper mind than Minato himself had. And Minato is considered to be a genius among geniuses. And so I think that when you take away Sasuke's Rinnegan and you take away his Ameno Tejikara, I think that giving him something like the Flying Raijin is something that's actually a good replacement. And... I think that a lot of people are missing the addition by subtraction element of Sasuke actually losing his Rinnegan. So yes, Sasuke's going to lose a lot of power, but the other thing you have to look at is that Sasuke's not going to be burning through his chakra as fast as he was because that Rinnegan puts a huge strain on your actual body. Even though Sasuke had Hashirama cells, Sasuke still had some issues using his actual Rinnegan. So I think that this could be something that actually works here. And I think that when you look at the way that Sasuke could be deploying this, this is something that works in the sense of Sasuke is going to continue going on those very dangerous missions. And so it's just a matter of being able to actually access the Osuski dimensions. But because Konoha has a motto there, I think that that is a way to actually open that up because a motto knows a lot about the Osuski clan. It kind of relies more on Naruto and Shikamaru and Sasuke and etc. 
actually believing the stuff that Amato is telling them, but they've put themselves into a situation where they have no choice but to actually start buying into the information that Amato is giving them. Because on one hand, while it is very self-serving for Amato to be a source of information for Konoha, and we don't know how much of it is him telling the truth and how much of it is an actual distraction, but if he has information on how to access those Asuski dimensions, using Flying Raijin is something that actually helps Sasuke out because it would just be a matter of keeping a Flying Raijin kunai in the actual Hokage office. That way if things get tricky, he can always teleport back. He can always teleport to pick Naruto up and then teleport back to wherever he was in those dimensions. And I think that is something that is kind of possible because we don't know the actual limitations of Flying Raijin when it comes to being able to actually teleport interdimensionally, but I would think that in theory, you should still be able to actually do something like that. We just never actually seen someone attempt to do it. Now, one other thing to actually kind of keep in mind here is that you also present the opportunity to where when the battles inevitably come with Code versus Sasuke and Code versus Naruto, this is one of those times to where, yes, Code is more physically powerful than both of these characters now, especially if you're in a situation to where code actually gets his limiters taken off they stand absolutely no chance but the edge that somebody like code has is that code you can tell when he took out those uh fodder that were guarding boros religious hideout that code actually possesses a little bit of training but what we know about sasuke is that sasuke has decades of being an actual shinobi and i think that because of how long Sasuke's actually trained his body and worked with it, incorporating Flying Raijin into his actual fighting style is something that makes the most sense. I personally would like to see Naruto actually get it, but I think that somebody like Sasuke actually being able to use Flying Raijin, especially now that Sasuke doesn't have his other arm, I think that is something kind of makes up for it because Think about it from this perspective. You're giving somebody like Sasuke the opportunity to start combining Flying Raijin with some of his more overpowered jutsu. So Flying Raijin with the Matsurasu, which Sasuke can still use, even though he's lost the Rinnegan. Using Flying Raijin in a situation like that allows him to teleport in front of somebody, hit them with the Matsurasu, and then teleport to the next victim. The same thing when it comes to actually using the Susano. We saw him in the anime being able to actually use a main Teji car in combination with the perfect Susano. I think that that would be a really good opportunity for the character of Sasuke to start combining elements like that where Sasuke is fighting against somebody like Code or fighting against somebody like Ada and you're in a situation where Sasuke is using perfect Susano and he's teleporting using flying Raijin teleportation markers. That could be something that works. The possibilities are absolutely unlimited and I think that when you look at Code specifically, that's a good way to actually counter because Code just needs to get those belts around you. While you could say Sasuke should be able to burn those belts away using Amaterasu, there's no guarantee that those belts don't work the same way that say Ishiki's uh, absorption abilities work in the sense that Ishiki was able to absorb the Matarasu flames, what's to say those belts can't do something similar? There's too much about code that we don't actually know. I don't think that something like that would be actually introduced if it was something that would be taken away that easily. Like for the longest time before the actual manga actually gave us more about the Flying Raijin, one of the arguments that people made about Flying Raijin is that, well, if you fight against Minato, if you can locate where all the Flying Raijin markers are, you can just use fire release and you can burn the actual paper that is wrapped around the kunai. But the thing we learn about the Flying Raijin in the actual manga is that like, yo, the ceiling formula always stays there. It doesn't actually get destroyed after they become the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails. The ceiling formula goes away. It has to be replanted onto somebody. That was the only time they were actually able to hit Obito during that time. But what I will say though is that like when you really, really look at it, this is one of those possibilities of potentially 
giving Sasuke the chance to actually counter everything that Code's doing. Code wraps those belts around Sasuke, Sasuke teleports away. All of a sudden, it's going to be a situation like Minato versus Obito to where the person who's able to land the first hit is going to be the one that actually wins. I think that that could be something that actually works there. If, say, potentially you have Sasuke using the perfect susano in combination with the shidori and he's using flying thunder god as a way to teleport to somebody like code to dish off a major lethal blow that is a possibility the more you start thinking about the various ways that sasuke can start using flying raijin when you look at his arsenal of ninjutsu now that is something that is very very deadly now you also have to look at it from this perspective here so a lot of people would say well what's the point in depowering naruto depowering sasuke if you're going to give them these potential upgrades and i would say that is valid to a certain extent but you also have to look at it from this perspective here too so for as much as they've gotten depowered they're still very powerful they're still a lot stronger than a lot of their actual counterparts their peers in the actual series and when you have this threat like code here and code is making it very clear that in the short term he wants to actually go after these characters i think that you can't actually play the long game here of well we're gonna have boruto and sarda and mitsuki and kawaki get more powerful than naruto and sasuke we're gonna use the cliche training arc and they're gonna get a massive power up we're just gonna go the full dragon ball route where everything happens on screen hell that's technically the full naruto route because naruto and sasuke's training in the manga wasn't actually shown to us like we saw naruto in the manga make the giant rasengan and that was it there was no other parts of his training with jiraiya that we saw in the manga so i think that that could be a way that you actually do it would it feel cheap absolutely but i say that to say there is some incentive of actually building up this character a little bit after him losing the rinnegan because for adding a overpowered jutsu like the flying thunder god like this you're still not going to be able to surpass what sasuke had with this actual rinnegan yours there's a pretty substantial boost in power that you get once you acquire rinnegan so when it comes to physical power sasuke would still be actually nerfed here but you would be giving him something to where he's able to actually fight in his normal fighting style his normal fighting method and it could be a way to actually make sasuke prove to be more useful going forward until boruto's truly ready to actually take the mantle from him and as much as people want to not hear this eventually actually surpass the character and there's gonna be two more points i want to make here and then we'll be done with the actual conversation so the next reason why you have to look at this is that for a character like Sasuke, who is so skilled that even Kurama, midway through the battle with Naruto and Sasuke, Kurama is looking over at Naruto and he's saying like, yo, that dude Sasuke, he's pulling off some stuff that's putting him on the Sage of Six Pass level in terms of skill. We got to be very careful with this guy. Even Hagoroma was looking at Sasuke and looking at how skilled he was and saying, good God, this dude just put all nine biju under genjutsu simultaneously at the same time put them in chibaku tensei and is still ready to go so you have two people that are pretty significant who are giving sasuke huge praise and so having sasuke pick up the flying raijin like this sasuke can obviously learn the jutsu minato as well as tobirama both praised the guy and tobirama was technically the one who invented the jutsu and minato was able to actually take the jutsu and make it even better than what tobirama did so again you have the praise there which kind of segues into this next point here which is there are other people in Konoha who know the uh, Flying Raijin Jutsu. So you have Minato and Tsunade's Hokage guards. All three of those people know the Flying Raijin. So technically, Sasuke could learn how to do the basics of that Jutsu by actually learning it from them. Or more than likely, there's probably some type of a scroll left behind that Minato had that's probably sitting somewhere in that Hokage tower somewhere to where Sasuke could learn that. Now you might say, why is that so important? Well, if you're one of those people that want to actually see Boruto inherit Minato's signature jutsu, who would you rather Boruto actually learn it from? Would you rather he actually learn it from somebody like Genma, one of Minato's guards? Basically somebody who's a Chunin or a Jonin fodder? Would you like to see something like that? 
or would you like to actually see Sasuke learn the Jutsu and then actually pass that Jutsu down to Boruto and have Boruto learn that Jutsu from Sasuke during the time skip, which could be, again, another way of actually bridging the gap between the various generations as well, is actually bigging up the character of Boruto and preparing him to take that mantle of being able to protect Konoha from the shadows. Maybe this isn't something that Boruto learns right away because you do need a high chakra pool in order to learn. Boruto without the Karma Seal. Boruto's got some decent chakra reserves, so not anything monster like Naruto, but Boruto should have enough chakra to actually pull off the basics of the Jutsu, and then once you start adding in the actual Karma Seal multiplier, Boruto should be able to start using some of the higher level variations of it. Maybe that's something that Boruto learns and works its way towards actually being able to fully master it going out of the time skip however i want to know from you guys do you guys think this is a good idea what do you think about my suggestions let me know down in the comment section below but as always guys if you like anything i had to say don't forget to comment rate subscribe and share thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video guys and don't forget to keep notifications turned on because the Borzo chapter is coming in a few days have an awesome day guys